Gothenburg in Sweden for round seven and eight of the Powerboat P1 World Championship. It's the second largest seaport of the Nordic countries, situated in southwest Sweden at the mouth of the Gothia River. The archipelago is also a vast area made up of thousands of islands stretching as far north as the Norwegian capital Oslo. With around 20,000 sailboats and yachts scattered around the city, the powerboats are sure to make a splash. In San Benedetto del Tronto, Italy, the races were combined. And in the Supersport class, there was frantic activity at the start as they raced for prime position at the first turn mark. Problems developed early for the big Sergio, a disappointment when they were hoping for a good result at their home round. The chase for the lead turned into another close one, but Team SW1 Capital had to drop out of it after a spin damaged their props. Siegel Shoulder and kept the rest of the boats at bay to win from Bayer Atalini and Eco Casa. And that was important for their hopes of the reigning champions winning this year's championship. Day two and a heavy storm in the morning saw the Adriatic Sea slightly rougher. Eco Casa were about to take the lead when unusually they hit a problem. Bayer Atalini took up the mantle as the storm closed in again in a dramatic finish and a perfect birthday present was given to Renato Guidi. With two events to go, Siegel Schuldren lead by Atalini, but the spirit of Belgium and Eco Casa are not out of the running yet. And it's an important weekend for the Supersport Championship, and it could just be a deciding one. Yes, this year it's a very tough uh, championship. We do have a lot of more boats that can win the, the championship, and uh, we are in the first position, and uh, we are trying our best to keep it until the end. When Gothenburg was founded in 1621, Dutch planners based around canal cities like Amsterdam. However, it's clear the international shipping industry influenced its eclectic architecture. Scandinavia's largest amusement park is also in the city centre, attracting up to 3 million visitors a year. For Team SW1 Capital, Italy was disappointing and an expensive weekend to forget. We had a disastrous weekend, everything went wrong, drives, engines, so we thought that was it. Lying in bed on the Monday morning, think nothing else could go wrong, then we got a phone call, 10 o'clock in the morning, saying the truck was on fire in Modena. It is, yeah, fairly bad fire, but in the end, not as bad as we thought it could have been. It was a big blow and a big surprise for Ico Casa to have a problem with a boat that's been ultra-reliable. We were literally about to take fire. We'd, we'd sort of planned our attack. We'd nearly got him on one corner, and we were just discussing how the next corner we've got to get him, got to move into first place, and bang. Yes, you can imagine the disappointment. There were nearly tears, but that's racing. There were big celebrations for the big Sergio after getting their first ever podium finish. We were uh, really working hard and waiting for this position, and. Uh, uh, the fee was a little bit rougher, which uh, suits uh, our, our boat, and uh, we managed to do the third position. After initial testing on Friday, the boats took to the Swedish waters for power pole to decide the lining up order for the race. And it was a strong run from Bayer Atalini, who set the fastest time, so can decide where they want to line up for the start. And this is going to be a help in getting a good start, as overtaking will be very difficult here, and Bayer are all too aware they have to win this weekend. I think that we, we have no chance. We have always to win to beat Angelo and to win the championship. So I'm uh, happy only if I win today. Siegel Schuldren were only a second and a half slower, so we have to look at them and SW1 Capital for the lead after the start. 
The Supersport class make their way out towards the starting point for the first race of the weekend, the sprint race, but without Ico Casa, who've broken a drive and are out. A tricky and narrow course. There's a start lap plus 10 full laps of the course. The start's going to be very important, with the chances of overtaking minimal. And Martin Sanborn's your commentator. Thank you, Chris. The boats are lined up in the order of their power pole position as we get ready to start round number seven, the Super Sport Sprint Race here in Gothenburg, Sweden. Looks like we actually have a patrol boat in the center of the course, a police boat. We have a green flag. The boats are underway off to an early start. The Spirit of Belgium in the center of your screen, but we have three boats converging on what looks like a patrol boat in the center of the course. Onboard via Atalini as Siegel, Shadra, and the Spirit of Ukraine has to dodge inside of a boat on the middle of the course. Now the boats have sorted themselves out in the lead. SW1 Capital coming up hard on the inside via Atalini as they all make their way on the long run-up. We have 10 laps plus the start. Siegel Shadra goes to the outside, taking the wide line. SW1 Capital via Atalini trying to hold the inside line. By Atolini is going to have the inside. SW1 Capital right alongside as they make their way towards a very sharp turn at the end of this long run-up. Top three boats, Spirit of Belgium. SW1 Capital by Atolini as Baia Atolini pulls ahead. Onboard Seagull Shadron as Aaron Chantar is talking to Angelo Tedeschi as they pick their line. By Atolini nose is just a little ahead of SW1 Capital. On board with Kim Collins and Daniel Cramphorn as they all set up for the first turn. First boat to the turn is Baia Atalini. They swing onto the outside. They push everybody a little bit wide. Siegel Shadron just barely touches the buoy as they go by, currently running in fourth position. SW1 Capital nosing up on Baia Atalini to challenge for the lead. They are neck and neck as they approach the start finish line as SW1 Capital just noses ahead of Baia Atalini. Two Donzi powerboats, one powered by Sterling and SW1 Capital, the other by Mercury, as SW1 Capital noses ahead of Baia Atalini and pulls into the lead, opening up a big margin as they head towards turn B. SW1 Capital followed by Baia Atalini as our battle for third and fourth position heats up. The Spirit of Ukraine, Siegel Shadron on the outside, on the inside, that is the Spirit of Belgium. Mercury powered Nortec versus an Ilmor powered Shadron. As the Spirit of Belgium is benefiting from that great start they got, as we go on board, the current points leaders and the defending world champions, Siegel Shadron. Angelo Tedeschi, Aaron Chantar, and Victor Shemchuk in their Ilmor powered Shadron. As we go back to our leader, SW1 Capital. Arneson drives on this Donzi that is Sterling powered. They've had their share of problems this year. The boat very fast, but they've managed to have a few issues that kept them off the top of the podium consistently. But they're out in the lead here in Gothenburg, Sweden. Kim Collins and Daniel Cramphorn. Our local entry, the wild card. This is Happy Go Lucky with Paul Soli and Christian Vault. As we go back to our battle for third and fourth position. Oh, the Spirit of Belgium goes to the inside, almost misses the boy. They have to correct and go back to the outside as they're trying to run down Baia Atalini that is currently running in second place. Mercury powered Nortec went to the inside, almost missed the boy. Early running in fifth position, the big Sergio Mercury powered with Alfredo Nunzo and Alfredo Amato. Back to our third place boat, the Spirit of Belgium, with Mika Rubin, Patrick Hubrix, and Mark Slusny. Bayatolini continues to hold on to second position, but Spirit of Belgium dives to the inside, goes over the wake, and tries to make a move on the inside. <laughs> That was over the shoulder of Baia Atalini. A Spirit of Belgium was on the inside. On the outside is Baia Atalini as they make their way around lapped traffic, getting around Blue Shaft. Spirit of Belgium now moves into second place, powering Baia on the inside as Baia Atalini goes by Blue Shaft on the outside for third position. That was on board Baia Atalini is now the new second place boat. 
Spirit of Belgium. A Mercury-powered Nortec as they drive by Baia Atolini. Baia Atolini just on the outside of their wake. Spirit of Belgium now has the advantage. They control the lane. They can push by a little wide if they want to, making it hard for them to get around. Spirit of Belgium. They do go a little deep. They push by Atolini wide as we see Siegel Chaudron coming around as they have to go wide because of Blue Shaft as they have now put them down a lap. But the Spirit of Belgium holds on to second position. On board the Ilmore powered Siegel Chaudron. The Spirit of Ukraine with Angela Tedeschi, Aaron Chantar, and Victor Shemchuk. See Angelo Tedeschi pushing the throttles all the way forward. They are the current points leaders trying to get up in the heat. They want to be on the podium today, but they're currently running in fourth position right in the rooster tail of Baia Atolini. Aaron Chantar wiping the water off his hands makes the steering wheel slippery as he's getting hosed down behind Baia Atolini as they battle, trying to run him down and move into third position. Baia Atolini holding on to third as they watch the Mercury-powered Nortec of the Spirit of Belgium make their way around the turn. By Ottolini takes the inside line, tries to ride the inside of the wake. Seagull Chaudron goes even further to the inside as they ride right up the wake of By Ottolini. This is the view from SW1 Capital as they are on their final lap heading towards the checkered flag. SW1 Capital takes the win. Back to our battle for third and fourth position. On board Siegel, Shadra and the Spirit of Ukraine. They are trying to get by Baia Atolini. They're right at the rooster tail. But Baia Atolini is going to hold them off and capture third place. <laughs> but the win goes to SW1 Capital with Kim Collins and Daniel Cramphorn. Team SW1 Capital wins, Spirit of Belgium get their best ever finish. Afterwards, the jury ruled that Bayer Atalini and Siegel Schuldren would both be given points for third due to a problem at the start with a boat on the course. The first podium for the weekend for the Supersport Sprint Race and after such a traumatic time during and after the Italian Grand Prix of the Sea, this was very much a healing win for Dan Cramphorn and Kim Collins of SW1 Capital. It's, uh, it's a good feeling, there's a huge amount of work has gone into the last three weeks, uh, getting us all race ready again and uh, it's a great reward. We, uh, it really made it all worthwhile, uh, obviously the more you put into something the more you get out of it, so we certainly took a lot from today. Join us for more Powerboat P1 World Championship action from Gothenburg in Sweden after the break when it's the turn of the Evolution Boats. Gothenburg in Sweden for the Powerboat P1 World Championship, where one of the area's most popular attractions is the picturesque archipelago, which can be reached by ferry boats. Now let's get back to this weekend's racing. The Evolution boats had pretty smooth waters to contend with again, and that meant high speeds and high stresses. The racing was close as always, with Cigarette Smash Boker and Snab OSG the early leaders. A spin for Snab OSG did cause high heart rates but no damage and they continued but came under pressure then from Metamarine Pignolo 53. It was all becoming a battle of the Italians and a thrilling one to watch. But just then, the cigarettes were heading for an easy win, an incredible spin took them into retirement. 
That left SNAV OSG the leaders and victory for Giancarlo Canciano and Giovanni Carpitella. Second time out, Lucas Oil out to limits hit problems and then so too did Cigarette Smash Poker retiring for the second time. Fernibo and Meta Marine Pagnolo 53 putting on a thrilling display as they raced it out for second place until the Meta Marine also hit problems. As the weather conditions changed for the worse, the finish line again was in sight for Snab OSG. Silver Line also hit problems but managed to get the boat to the finish line in third. The addition of reliability points for the first half of the season helped keep Silver Line the Evolution leaders. If they stay reliable, it's going to be hard to catch them, but the others will be doing their very best to do just that. It's a matter of finishing um, is really important for us, so chasing the lead boats is not so much of a priority, although it'd be good fun and it's nice to be in with a pack. Yes, for us it's a matter of finishing now. There was no doubt that Cigarette Smash Poker were the fastest boat in Italy, but two retirements and that scary spin was a disappointment. This time we were lucky. We could uh, handle the boat to, to the finish and uh, at least we took uh, 90 points, uh, otherwise it would be a really failure. Lucas Oil had a logistical nightmare to get apart from the USA in time for the first race, but after that they too couldn't believe their bad luck in both races. We got going, the boat was running really good, but in the first lap we hit something and tore a whole blade off of a pella. And so that's something, you know, you really can't uh, forecast. That's just pure bad luck, nothing you can plan for. That put us, you know, we ran the rest of the race on Saturday with a hell of a vibration uh, through the boat, and then that gave us some damage for Sunday's race. So, um, yeah, at the end of the day, we didn't come out anywhere near where we expected to come. Fernibo missed the first race when they damaged an engine and had to drive to Belgium for a new one. Second place was a reward in race two, but they still had problems and it could have been a win. We are hoping to, for the first time, a first place, that's what we are hoping, but uh, not very sure about it. Uh, we have brand new propellers, we didn't test it. We did a lot of test work with the uh, engines, with the boats, other propellers, but this propeller just arrived uh, yesterday. So we hope this will be the excellent ones for us and hope the engines keep on running. And this is a bird's eye view of the course. The rocks and islands in the center of the picture are what the course goes through and around for the race and for power pole. There's very little margin for error. The Evolution power pole was hotly contested. Fernibo was piloted by Pierre Culpin and their reserve driver, Benjamin Van Riet, and they set the fastest time. We are more than happy and uh, we are more than pleased that everything was running more and more better and better. Only three Evolution boats recorded a time in the power pole, but it looked as if neither SNAV OSG or Cigarette Smash Poker had an answer to the speed of Fernibo. The winners of Power Pole Fernibo get ready for the start of the Evolution Sprint Race. And it's the same course for the Evolution class. They'll race over a start lap plus 11 laps. Their lap times will be much quicker. And Martin Sambord is Oceanside. Thank you, Chris. As our Evolution boats get ready to take to the course in the Sprint Race here in Gothenburg, Sweden, they line up once again according to their Power Pole finish positions with the fastest boat on the inside, Team Fernibo. And we have a green flag and the boats are underway. Off to an early jump, Team Fernibo looks like they were on it maybe a little early. As you can see, Giancarlo Cangiano looked like he may have thought the same thing. He's in lane two in SNAV OSG. Right alongside him, Team Silverline, the current points leaders coming up hard in the middle is Lucas Oil Outer Limits. And Cigarette Smash Poker on the outside as we go on board Fernibo. The view from the lead as they look back at the rest of the pack. Now moving into second place, Lucas Oil Outer Limits. So we have Fernibo, Lucas Oil Outer Limits, and Snav OSG with Cigarette on the outside. On board Silver Line with Drew Langdon and Jan Fakowski. Lucas Oil Outer Limits is now pulling up and challenging Fernibo from the outside. Fernibo has the inside line as they make their way towards the first turn on this long straightaway. And Lucas Oil just edges ahead of Team Fernibo. Fernibo looks like they're slowing down just a little bit as they head to the turn. Lucas Oil on the outside. They move into the lead. Team Fernibo on the inside. Fernibo right at the rooster tail of Lucas Oil Outer Limits with Fiori and Scro. 
and Furtibo slows down. Furtibo slowing way down as they go through the turn. And they go to the inside. Lucas Oil outer limit swings wide to the outside in the lead. Team Furnabo pulls off. They are slowing way down. Coming to the inside, they've got a problem. That's going to put Snab OSG in second place, followed by Cranefields, Wine, and then Cigarette Smash Poker. As Cigarette Smash Poker goes across all of the wakes, trying to move to the inside. That's on board Snab OSG. Giancarlo Congiano speaking to Hannes Bohink telling him where he wants to go on the race courses. They are now in second place. We go back to Team Furnabo, and they have indeed had a problem. They are nearly off, playing to the inside, having just gone around turn M, the Stena curve. And their day is done before it even gets started as we go back to our battle for second place. Cranefield's line on the outside is challenging Snab OSG, and they have now moved into second place. They're on the outside. Snab OSG goes across the wake and goes to the outside of the line chosen by Lucas Oil Outer Limits, but they push Cranefield's wine even wider. Cranefield's goes right through the inside of the rooster tail of Snab OSG. They went right through the rooster tail of Snab OSG to the inside as we look at our leaders, Lucas Oil Outer Limits with Joe Scro and Mike Fiore. They have clean water as they are out in the lead. Second place, Snab OSG. And they've opened up a big...